Chapter 1. When the government fails, the people suffer. When it comes to diplomatic and civil matters, the government is the first defense line for the people. In trying times, the people look to the government first for hope and respite. When the government fails to be there for the people, things most likely take a downward spiral. In Wuhan's case, the problem started when the first set of medical experts concluded that the virus was not transmissible between humans. The preliminary conclusion hindered what would have been an early attempt to stop the spread of the novel coronavirus. In the Hubei province, Wuhan, the government failed to activate an early lockdown, and the virus traveled for over 20 days before the lockdown was activated. The lockdown disrupted business activities and affected the educational sector. Lies only worsen a situation by confusing everyone involved. Also, in an attempt to hide the truth and protect the image of the city, the Wuhan government denied many factual reports, leaving the people confused. Media posts were censored, and accounts that posted censored content were either temporarily closed or permanently shut down. The spread of the coronavirus infection took the world by storm, but it could have been well contained if the initial information about its transmission had been correct. The number one responsibility for each of us is to change ourselves with the hope that others will follow. Ron Paul. For making online posts about the things that genuinely happened in Wuhan, Fang faced many criticisms, but she was relentless in her desire to put the truth to the world. Many people believed she was lying, but the way the virus played out shows that they were the ones who couldn't recognize the truth. Chapter 2. Too much faith in the government cost the people of Wuhan a lot. On the 20th of January 2020, when the Chinese infectious disease specialist Dr. Zhang Nanshan revealed that the novel coronavirus was being spread by human-to-human -human transmission, a feeling of uncertainty filled the air. When the news filtered in that 14 medical workers had already been infected, the feeling changed from apprehension to fear. For Fang, however, it moved from uncertainty to fear to anger. As a writer, she got stuck in Hubei province, and with little to do, she decided to make a daily web post on her Weibo, a microblogging website account. Earlier, the official media sources had been consistently telling the people that the novel virus was not contagious between people, and that it was controllable and preventable. This misinformation led to an unprecedented level of infection that came about due to the relaxed attitude people displayed. Having heard that the virus was not transmissible between humans, the people relaxed and unconsciously spread the virus further. In the city of Wuhan, where the virus broke out, life was terrible for the people. The Hubei province, which was the epicenter of the virus, became a ghost town. The coronavirus had initially been discovered on the 31st of December 2019. For the next 20 days, however, everyone had a lax attitude about it. We should have already learned a great lesson from the SARS outbreak back in 2003, but we didn't. We had been too careless, and there were also objective life situations that contributed to that. One of the more critical mistakes we made was that we had placed too much faith in the government. For the people of Wuhan, they had too much faith in their leaders. They believed that there was no way that the governmental leaders in Hubei province would adopt an irresponsible attitude when it came to such a critical event where lives were in the balance. However, across the world, most of the people were left disappointed in the government. When a government forbids the public from understanding the true nature of events, fear will lead to a bigger disaster. The people of Wuhan suffered from the habitual political behaviors of political leaders. Issues like reporting the good news while hiding the bad and preventing people from speaking the truth bore significant burdens. Did you know, the Hubei province in Wuhan, China recorded the most deaths of any city in China, with over 4,500 deaths. Chapter 3 the economic effects of the lockdown created more fear in the minds of the people. In the first few months of the outbreak, the people of Wuhan were still in a critical phase. Even though many people had already overcome the initial state of fear, helplessness, and anxiety. During the early stage of the outbreak, officials from Wuhan were lost for ideas on how to deal with the virus. Before and after the quarantine went into full effect, those officials were confused, trying to strike a balance between keeping the people safe and stabilizing the economy. This led to a great wave of public fear and really hurt a lot of people in Wuhan. However, the situation wasn't peculiar to Wuhan alone. Almost the whole of China experienced the same level of governance. The whole world suffered because of government officials' lax attitude, which mainly affected people's lives. Government officials in China and across the world have always let written directives guide their work. 
So once those directives were taken away and they had to use their discretion, they were at a complete loss as to how to navigate the storm. If the outbreak had happened in another Chinese province, those officials' performance wouldn't be much different from that of Hubei in Wuhan. Empty talk about political correctness without seeking truth from facts can lead to disaster. The people mostly believed that no virus was too strong to disrupt our lives and that as humans, we would always find a way through. We failed to take care of our environment because we believe it couldn't do us any major harm. While the people wallowed in arrogance, the government wallowed in ignorance. Prohibiting people from speaking the truth and the media from reporting the truth leads to fear and lawlessness. One of the effects of the lawlessness was the uncontrolled market prices. When a man from Wuhan went to the pharmacy to buy a mask, he discovered that the price inflated from 1 yen to 30 yen each. As humans, we must understand that nature will always fight back if we fail to care for the environment. Humankind cannot continue to be lost in its own arrogance. We must no longer think of ourselves as the center of the world, and we can no longer believe that we are invincible. Our arrogance has led us to underestimate the destructive power of even the smallest things, like a virus. Chapter 4 The government created a bigger problem by trying to hide the truth from the people. A few months after the outbreak, the situation in Wuhan started improving. Although the cases continued to increase in both the number of confirmed cases and the suspected cases of coronavirus infection, the rate of infection had begun to slow down. The number of patients with critical symptoms had also started to decline, and the mortality rate was holding steady at around 2%. The biggest news, however, was that the number of patients who had recovered had also increased. Sometimes, a second professional opinion is necessary to uncover the truth. When the virus broke out, Mr. Wang Guangfa, a Chinese virologist, was part of the second team of specialists sent to Wuhan to investigate the outbreak. Shortly after he declared the disease controllable and preventable, he became infected with the coronavirus. Even though his earlier statement might not have directly come from him, it was expected of him to at least show some sense of remorse. None of this happened at any point in time. As members of the team of appointed specialists, Mr. Wang and his team were responsible for giving the people of Wuhan information that severely underestimated the nature of this virus. Irrespective of the political stance and affiliation and the need to protect the country from external scrutiny, as a doctor, Mr. Wang should have been a bit more prudent when he made that initial statement. Instead, he ascertained the supposed safety of the people with absolute resolution and decisiveness. By the time that he was infected on the 16th of January 2020, it was quite clear that the virus was contagious between people. Yet, for some reason, Mr. Wang never came out to deny his initial statement, nor show any remorse for misleading the public. Only three days later, when Zhang Nanshan from the Chinese Academy of Engineering arrived in Wuhan, the truth was finally revealed. Dr. Zhang and his team conducted another extensive research and discovered that the virus was transmissible between humans. Chapter 5. The lockdown effects made many people depressed and suicidal. Many businesses threatened to crumble due to the strict lockdown measures, and the need to ensure protection brought about some tough decisions. Some of those decisions greatly affected innocent citizens. For instance, there was a time when a peasant traveling in the middle of the night was prohibited from going to his destination. People had built a makeshift wall to block the road, and even though he pleaded with the people guarding the road, they didn't let him pass. The regulations that were put in place to prevent the spread of the disease were good, but enforcing them with an iron hand overlooked the basic principles of what was humane. The peasant had to sleep in the cold on the road, and yet nobody offered him shelter for the fear that he might have been infected with the deadly virus. There was also a report of a child with special needs whose father was ordered into isolation. The poor child was forced to live on his own for five days and ended up dying of starvation and lack of adequate care. Challenging situations lead to tough decisions because humans will value survival over empathy in the face of fear. The coronavirus outbreak exposed so many different things. It exposed the immaturity of many Chinese officials. It also exposed the diseases running rampant through the heart of our society. The virus exposed many hidden sicknesses in the body because the majority of those who died from the virus had underlying health problems. It also exposed the ills of our society. These are the ills that are worse than the novel coronavirus. These ills include corruption, austerity, negligence, and selfishness. 
For these ills, there's no cure in sight because no one is willing to treat them. Social media shared the truth that the government tried so much to hide. There were videos shared online showing the hopeless and helpless state of the overwhelmed medical practitioners. Most of these videos were hard to watch, but as a community, Wuhan's people had to stay healthy. They had to remember those people who had passed and remember those who suffered a wrongful death. The only way they could look was up, and if not for anything else, they had to stay strong on behalf of those who couldn't make it. Chapter 6 Access to medical care was a significant determinant in curbing the spread of coronavirus in Wuhan. According to what the doctors at the Wuhan Research Center said, the novel coronavirus was thought to be extremely contagious. Still, as long as patients received standard treatment, the death rate was not too high. Patients who had received treatment outside of Hubei province had already proven the claim to be true because they had access to better medical care. The reason the death rate was so high in Wuhan was that there were a large number of patients who couldn't get access to hospital care. Without proper treatment, mild cases turned severe and serious issues led to death. Another contributing factor was tied to the fact that the quarantine procedures were flawed early on, which led to many cases of a single person infecting their entire family. This, in turn, led to an increase in infections and triggered a whole series of other tragedies. When we remain sad, depression creeps in. Sadness kills our positivity, and the sadder we get, the more shattered we become. The people of Wuhan remained quite depressed. All the sadness and depression left people feeling uncertain about the future, causing them to slip into a state of psychological insecurity easily. Alongside this, there was the concerning issue of the people's livelihood, as most people didn't have any new income coming in, which had further contributed to their insecurity. They didn't know when they would be able to get back to work and had no idea when they would go outside again. They were left groping in the dark and had no power to control their own fate. A lot of people ended up losing their most fundamental sense of security during those trying times. The people desperately hoped for an explanation, something they could hold on to, but they barely got any. Governments exchanged blames, and the people were left more confused than before. Chapter 7 The truth might be dangerous, but it needs to be told so that people can assess a situation correctly. Fang's online posts brought her many criticisms. She spoke freely about the government's response to the pandemic. As a writer, she made it clear that it was not her job to go after the Chinese officials. Instead, she wanted to understand her experiences of the whole situation by asking questions and bringing people's attention to the concerns of those around her. When a Chinese politician gathered some coronavirus patients to sing the Communist Party anthem for a public campaign, Fang was the first of the few people who questioned such a move. Fang already knew that criticizing China's government often came at a price, but she wasn't deterred. She decided to tell the truth the way it was without fear. She was used to seeing her online posts removed after being published or having her social media accounts temporarily suspended by censors. Fang's decision to expose the government didn't sit well with many people, who would instead protect an image than protect the people's lives. Social media censorship is one of the most common ways the government clamps down on the truth. Since news travels faster on social media, its contents are heavily monitored in many parts of the world. The truth is rarely easy, and it's never simple, but it's better to be hurt by the truth than to be comforted with a lie. In an attempt to tell the truth, Fang made many enemies, not just from the government, but also from the people. Several blogs and social media posts and articles were published against her, blaming her for spreading lies and rumors. Several troll accounts came at her and attacked her, with some accusing her of being sponsored by anarchists. The trolls complained that she only used full names when writing about officials, but not when writing about her friends. Her actions were deemed suspicious, and they also blamed her for making stories up to keep her daily diary running. As the quarantine and lockdown continued, Fang continued to write, and her online attacks increased. However, she was resolute in her decision not to back down. The truth had to be told, and Fang decided she would always tell it. Chapter 8 Coming together in difficult times is a great way for communities to overcome challenges. The infection rate of the coronavirus started to recede in the early days of February 2020. However, the breakthrough didn't come until much later. Outside Wuhan, the cases dropped massively, and the recovery rate continued to increase. While the people outside Hubei were looking forward to better days, those in Wuhan were still battling with the virus. Feng reported the reason for this to be the inadequate attention paid to Wuhan. 
Other people blamed Wuhan for being the epicenter of the outbreak, and the people of Wuhan received more blame than sympathy. They were subjected to racial and tribal profiling, and they faced a lot of bullying online from outsiders. Chinese people were targeted as a whole by Westerners who blamed them for eating live animals, thereby exposing themselves to infections. Many people who became infected did not receive treatment until it was too late. The mental stress of the increasing death rates caused a lot of problems. Many doctors and other health workers lost their lives either to the virus or the stress of seeing too many dead bodies. Like police officers, political staff, and frontline volunteers, other essential workers also lost their lives. In Wuhan Central Hospital alone, the number of health workers who had been infected climbed above 300 by mid-February. During the quarantine, many people lost friends and family members, and suicide rates increased. Some families had it worse, like Liu Fan, a deputy head nurse of the Wuchang Hospital in Wuhan, who lost her brother and both her parents to the virus. As the virus ravaged, the people of Wuhan had to find solace within themselves as people outside Wuhan mostly bullied them. The people made it a collective responsibility to be there for each other in the trying times. The people who had fresh foodstuffs sent it out to those who didn't. Medical supplies were also sent out to those who needed it, and private organizations did their part to make people feel a little respite. The true solution to a problem lies in our eagerness to allow love and unity to guide us through difficult times. Chapter 9. The resilience of the people of Wuhan triggered a better response from the government. On the 6th of March 2020, the new cases of coronavirus in Wuhan fell below 100 for the first time. After four days of seeing new coronavirus cases linger at just over 100, the people of Wuhan finally entered a new phase that would allow them to start getting things back to a basic operating level. The coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan saw a real breakthrough, and the feeling of hope came back to the people. The health management resources were restored, and presumptive cases could receive inpatient treatment at the hospital. Specialized clinics and departments at various hospitals began to reopen, making it easier for sick people to get treatments. For the first time in a long time, there was light at the end of the tunnel. Life began to return to Wuhan, and the people looked forward to better days. At this point, the government stepped in massively and wowed the world with how they curbed the virus's spread. Several mobile hotspots were set up in key areas, and the streets were disinfected. One by one, people started returning to work, and the economy began to pick up. A nation rises when the people are united in the face of challenges. The return to everyday life didn't end the preventive measures set up by the government when the virus started. To prevent more surges and spikes in the number of infected persons, people still had to use their face masks and hand sanitizers. The most important of the preventative measures was social distancing. Since the virus spreads through the fluids that come out of the mouth and nose, it became essential to avoid crowded places. Parties and social gatherings remained prohibited and family gatherings were discouraged. On the 19th of March, 2020, the city of Wuhan failed to record any case for the first time since the outbreak. A few days later, on the 24th of March, 2020, Fang ended her online diary after 60 consecutive entries. On the 8th of April, 2020, the government of Wuhan officially opened the city again. It was such an emotional day for the people of Wuhan and the whole world at large. The pain and resilience shown by the people of Wuhan made the world realize that the virus was beatable. We are each other's harvest. We are each other's business. We are each other's magnitude and bond. Gwendolyn Brook Conclusion The novel coronavirus, which started in Wuhan and spread all across the world, caused many damages. For the people who lived in Wuhan, the epicenter of the virus, it was a bigger issue. They faced criticism from outside and grappled with the fear from within. Being the epicenter, they were the worst hit when the virus became an epidemic. The government's role in the spread of the coronavirus contributed massively to how much it affected people. While some countries were proactive, some were lax with the virus until it almost became too deadly to contain. Fang's online diary visualizes the problems faced by the people of Wuhan and how they could collectively pull through the tough times. The lockdown, which started very strongly, created fear and uncertainty in the minds of many people. The people were confused and frustrated and depressed as loved ones either died or got very close to death. The coronavirus pandemic put Wuhan and China as a whole at a standstill, crumbling businesses and killing the people's confidence. However, when things got terrible, the people came together and supported themselves. The unity among the people prompted the government to wake up, and Wuhan slowly but steadily came back to life.
Try this. Practice safe social distancing, wear your mask, and use your hand sanitizers always. The coronavirus has no cure yet, but its spread can be prevented when you do all these things.